So um, I had a half day today, so I am. Um, I had lunch with a, or I had a coffee with a lovely friend of mine, and I got some baby hugs. Yes, baby hugs. They're very important. <sighs> so cute. Anyway, so um, yeah, and I just did some shopping, got some stationery, fascinating, and I'm about to head home and say hi to James and squeeze my cat because I wasn't allowed to squeeze the baby, so I can squeeze the cat. Uh, he was really cute and he was in that box. What's in this box? Hmm? What you doing, Beans? Do something nice. Oh, that's a nice little box you got there. <laughs> Mr. Beans, that used to be a really good bag, I bet. We could have used that again, you know? You are. Today I am making some risotto using the rest of the uh, dried shiitake. So I've got some rice in there, just basmati rice, I don't have any risotto rice. Some frozen spinach, um, onion, garlic, uh, leek. I'll put in a bit of, where did I put it? Oh, this stuff just at the top. This is a really nice. It's um, kind of the vialized answer to feta, but it's a lot softer. So, and it melts really nicely, so I'll melt it into that and it'll be delicious. It's kind of, it kind of tastes like blue cheesy then. Yeah, well, it just tastes like feta really. So yeah. Beans is done. His bag. Which he's had ruined. What do you like? What do you like? Um, I'm going to add some uh, mushroom powder. This is beautiful stuff. It kind of gives that umami taste which is just kind of tasty seashore woodland and seashore savory flavor yum, yum. it's rich in natural like glucomic acid and is a natural alternative to msg so uh msg is good for its thickening it's good for thickening and taste and this one is also really good for thickening as well and this one has is fortified with b12 which is the one vitamin which i would be a little bit nervous about not getting um, so I pop that in um, into like loads of tomato dishes. It gives kind of a, a cheesy flavour to tomato dishes. Uh, pop it into pastas, pop it into risottos. Anything that you want a cheesy kind of taste. Anything you'd add cheese to, uh, it goes really well in. So like chilies. You can add cheese to anything, sure. But yeah, I really like it with um, on top, just sprinkled on top of beans on toast. Yum. So I'm just waiting for the rice to cook. Pack on your box. Beans loves his box. He's a box baby. Aren't you baby? No. Oh. He's so cute. Look at the camera. Oh, is this on backwards? Oh no, this is just my, this is my naturally dyed bracelet from Deborah Handmates. Um, so I'm <clears throat> just back from getting a laser treatment on my legs. I totally blame Hohi Locatelli, but I'm actually really glad that she did because I've been meaning to do it for years and <sighs> yeah. So it's super sore though. Ow. Um, yeah. Oh, I also, I wanted to thank everybody who's gone over and um, liked my Instagram and followed my Instagram page. Thanks very much, I really appreciate it. It's really nice. It's nice when people do that. I'm trying to get to 10,000 and um, I, I really want the swipe up functions. I really want to unlock the swipe up functions. So, <sighs> but thanks, I really appreciate it. And yeah, I am having some matcha, ginseng matcha green from my Puka calendar from Bernadine. I've stopped opening my advent calendars. Have you guys noticed? 
Do you care? It gets a bit repetitive, don't you think? I don't know. I'm very slow anyway. I'm only on day seven on my um, cardigan, which I'm knitting. Um, I'll show you that, actually. So I've poured my tea. We got a new kettle because our old kettle died from lime scale. You can't live without a kettle. I mean, you can. You can boil water in a pot if you're into that. But I am not into that. So, I've got James's... There's, oh, we've got a team. Okay. So we've got James's Defense Against the Dark Arts mug. Death Eaters, sorry, Death Eaters mug. The exact opposite. The Dark Arts mug. And then we've got my kind of greeny, slitheriny mug. Oh, look at that. Cute. Thematic. Color, color. Normally, uh, this is my kind of uh, loose leaf tea thing, so it fits right in and it has a little cap. I got it from Sostranagrain, I think the sister's green place thing and um yeah so the place is absolutely full james has all of the club orange and coca-cola and crisps which is killing me because i really want to drink it all but i really shouldn't because it's bad for you especially if you drink it all in one go like i'm having two of these a day now that's i never never drink fizzy drinks so it's not good for me um my risotto turned out really nice just threw in some peas on top there so that is going to be my lunch tomorrow so i'm just i think it's cool now put it in the fridge this is my timely cardigan um it's in my clistra backpack and with my cottage number nine <laughs> i've just got bags everywhere i need to stop buying bags no everyone needs to stop making gorgeous bags just stop right now so um let me get this a bit so this is my timely cardigan. I'm hopefully going to film a podcast tomorrow to talk more about this uh, more clearly uh, with for further detail and better lighting. So, um, yeah. So this is where I am at the moment. I have a feeling this stripe should have been here, but it's too late now. Um, so, yeah. But at the moment, I am trying to um, get my woven piece off the loom. I am... I've just finished all of my hand spun and I'm just uh, finishing off with some of the plied yarns. So I'm kind of just experimenting with texture, although I have just been going for sheet um, kind of. Uh, uh, I, ha I probably have about a meter of uh, just straight weave, but I have some lino lace in there, some window pane. Um, I tried some um what's the word i tried some kind of pickup stick work uh which i might try again actually for the last little bit you can do drawings with pickups pickup stick so i'm really having fun with it actually i'm really having fun with it but i do need to finish by tomorrow because the class is on sunday so i need to have it ready to take off the loom on sunday i've hidden the sweets away from me but I know where they are, so that doesn't really work. Celebration. Celebrate the time. Come on. Oh gosh, I hope it doesn't pick up on that music. That's too many. And too many bounties. Gross. What is the one sweet you always leave? I always leave a bounty can't stand the thing get away from me i think it's just the coconut business yeah yuck desiccated mm. coconut and then trying to rehydrate it what are you trying to do you've destroyed it there's no saving it get rid so yeah no no um coconuts in my house no bounties allowed so uh, on the selection boxes and there's one rose which has like a big uh, big hazelnut in it and I'm like not a fan. James. Hi. Yes. What's the sweet you always leave in the in the box? Uh the bounties. Yeah. This is why and yet we're made for each other. Than yeah. Why is there more of them? No, so they recycle them. Yes. I've never sent back a bounty. Really not <laughs> right. 
Okay. Uh, toast. Uh, toast. Uh, toast. Okay. I have a question that I've been thinking about for maybe four days. What's your favorite Christmas film? I think, and I've just turned it on on TV, I think mine might be While You Were Sleeping because I love Sandy Bullock. I love her so much. Um, or The Holiday. I love them. They're so silly and rom com -y. Um, I, I, I like I'll watch like the funny ones like you know the Grinch and Elf and stuff and they are funny uh, I loved Arthur Christmas as well but like I think the rom-coms might be my favorite because they're just so cheesy and this time of year you feel like you can watch all the cheesy films <laughs> anyway let me know in the comments below because I am on the hunt for some Christmas films and I just can't think of them Anyway, so I just need a few ideas. And you guys are so good at ideas. Excellent idea-ing there now. Um, so yeah, I did a bit of um, float, floating. So when this is cut off, the big reveal will hopefully happen on Sunday. Um, you'll be able to see some of the different experiments that I've done on this huge, massive experiment loom. Um, I think there's about five and a bit meters on this, probably four and a bit. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but there's a lot of fabric here. Somebody asked me in the last comment, in the last video, um, will weaving with raw silk be stiff? I think that you, this isn't raw, raw silk. I'm not like literally picking it up off of the cocoons, you know. It has been washed and degummed and then hand spun. So it has been processed and it's incredibly soft and really fluffy and really lovely to weave with. Um, it's really warm and um, it's not, it, it, the drape on this I know is going to be really nice because when I take the, um, when I take the pressure off it, it has the tension of like a normal, woven fabric but it also it will have a now once the tension comes in and once this has been washed all fabric has this kind of stiffness I don't know if you can see that but it is kind of a bit stiff but that's just because it's been under tension for so long um once it comes off I feel like it's going to be incredibly soft and uh, the the yarn itself in the skein is very soft um it's 100% silk, but it is a short staple. Now I have started weaving the weft with the mill spun, which is even softer, if you know, if that makes sense. Uh, it's, um, and it doesn't stick as much as the, it doesn't pill or stick as much as the hand spun did. Um, so yeah, I'm finishing off this side of the warp. It's probably about four, four feet maybe. Um, of the warp in, um, I know I keep swapping measurements between feet and, and inches and centimeters and I, I find centimeters difficult to um, measure things in but meters is good. Do you know I don't I can't I can't in my head identify 20 centimeters I'm like this much? You know, maybe this is 10 centimeters. I don't know. But I know four inches is, that's an inch-ish. You know, it's like that. I don't know. I can kind of, anyway. 
that's an aside yes so i uh so yeah i um i'm not sure what you mean by raw silk you may be thinking of the raw silk fabric like that you actually get um i my 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 aunt made had a wedding dress made of the raw silk and it is quite stiff but it's not anything like this i don't think um i don't think yeah so it is not really raw it has been washed and processed and degummed that would cause the uh the stiffness i guess um it has been Actually, we've got something fun uh, happening myself and Wizard, so keep an eye out for a little collaboration. Actually, it's, I can't believe in the last four months, things just have, people have started, I don't know what it is. It's probably the numbers. It's honestly like, it's probably the numbers I'm starting to get higher numbers and it's opening up opportunities for me so i really want to thank you um as a viewer um and as a, a follower on instagram um it's all it's all down to you these opportunities that are coming my way um you chose to subscribe or watch um you can choose to unsubscribe at any time if you want like but it's because of your choices that I'm getting these opportunities. Um, so I really appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate that you value the work that I'm putting out there, what I'm producing. I know they're a little bit mad <laughs> and not very organized. But, you know, some people say they learn a lot from me. So that's good. <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you so much because it's kind of unbelievable. I look at the numbers these days and I'm just like, this is, I'm like 14,000 subscribers on YouTube and um, 8,300 on Instagram. Like, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I'd love to, like, I think the milestone that I'm trying to get to, I, I've spoken about this already, I need to stop talking about it, but is, is that 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, but mainly because it's kind of handy to have that swipe up and link function. But, um, yeah, no pressure. I know, like, my Instagram feed is very precious. Um, I had to actually cut down, I was following 5,000 people. That's a lot of people um, and I cut it down I was felt like I was being ruthless and um, I cut it down to 850 and I'm kind of fluctuating between 800 850 the whole time and um, some people reached out to me at the time when I was doing a big kind of unfollow and they were like oh Grace have I said something wrong because no doubt it can it it um, coincided with you know something awful that was happening at the time and they were like did I say something wrong and I'm like no, no 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 it's literally like I'm just following so many people and a lot of the people I was following were yarn dyers and I felt like well I went to a class from Countess of Blaise um in Woolen they have every year they have on the Sunday as an industry specific set of classes, which is so interesting. This year, there's a lot of cool stuff happening. I'm not gonna say what, but you know. And um, she basically said, if you're following other people, you're gonna be influenced by other people and your work may not be original and you might find yourself copying by accident, you know, or, you know, like how, if you're, constantly following what other people are doing how are you going to come up with your own thing and it really resonated with me and what I was finding was I was suffering from comparison paralysis and now I still haven't got back to yarn dyeing but I'm feeling a little bit more I can, <sighs> there's inspiration and there's am I just copying you know and I always always worried about that um I, I'd hate to be but there are only certain combinations of colors and it can be really tricky sometimes. So, um, 
anyway, all that to say, if I did unfollow you um, a couple of months back, it was absolutely nothing personal. And it's just to um, make sure I have actual relationships with the people I follow. Um, yeah, I find Instagram is an incredibly useful tool for communicating, for collaborating. I hate that word, but it is true. <laughs> uh, for connecting with people of similar interests. Like I would never, ever have gone anywhere if I didn't have Instagram. If I would never have started this whole thing if I didn't have Instagram. I really value Instagram as a medium for community and communication. But at the same time, I you can also be heavily influenced and uh, people call me an influencer now and it really stresses me out a little bit. I hope I influence you people to try things and not be afraid to try things. Because I think that's what's important. Because I think a lot of people are terrified to start something and that's what I would like to get out there is to be a little bit fearless. It's only knitting. It's not the end of the world. You know, it's only yarn. It's a very, to be honest, it is, a, especially if you're knitting or something like that, it, it, it is a very low risk. You can pull it out and start again. Do you know, there's no shame in, what's the word, not shame, but this terror of being creative and getting it wrong and perfectionism. I find it crippling uh, as a concept and I hope that my method which is throwing yourself in Asher what we you know if it goes wrong it goes wrong it's a funny story if it goes wrong but and you've learned something from it I think that's what I would like to be known for a little bit of try it and see if you like it and if you don't you don't try it and see if it works and if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's okay. Like, it's wonderful and it's lovely. And I'd love for that to be my message. And there's also like people that I've met on Instagram and they've given me so much and I love their work and what they've given to the community and I love their talent. And I suppose I do really love then products from them because I know them as people, but it was people first, then what they made. And then of course they had to make amazing things. Ugh, stupid, talented, gifted people. <laughs> and then I talk about those things because I feel like you might, I like it anyway. So I suppose I am an influencer. It's so weird. That whole chat about influencer -y stuff is weird, but I'm nothing if not honest. And you'll always get honesty from me as much as they can. Hmm. I think I'm onto my last bag. This is my brown paper at the end here. I think that's my last one and I do I keep going I'm watching it while you're sleeping but like on mute because I've watched it so many times Sandy you're so fabby but what I am going to do is oh Baskin Robbins oh I just want ice cream now never had Baskin Robbins anyway she's falling in love with the brother it's romantic so yeah, I want to, oh, I also got a few things. I got this. Ooh. Anyway, sorry, I'm chatting on now for far too long. And uh, yeah, so I will talk to you tomorrow. It is my lazy Saturday day tomorrow. Lazy as in I have nothing planned specifically, but I'm sure if I look around for 10 seconds, I have 50,000 things to do. And I will get doing some of them tomorrow. Um, I really want to make a uh, film a podcast. Um, and I really want to um, film a giveaway. Oh, gosh. I forgot to do the giveaway winners all week. Possibly last week as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two weeks. I forgot. 
meanest on hers. It's for the spin and make along. And I have a whole bag full of prizes up there that I really need to film for tomorrow. So you all need to get me um, get on board because uh, that's uh, I need to let people know who they won because lots of people won and I need to film it. Anyway, good night and I'll see you.